Thank you. Uh, thank you to the Architectural League for, for this honor of being selected. Okay. I'm going to be concentrating on, on this one project called Tank. You can kind of see uh, the generative force of, uh, of the project right there. Uh, and, and, and showing how it evolved uh, from the conceptual idea through design and um, construction documentation, uh, bidding, and uh, construction. And basically, the same root of the idea was present at the end. When we came upon the site, it was um, pretty much of a blank slate, uh, a typical industrial rooftop in uh, Chelsea, and had great sun, uh, great views, some of the Empire State Building. And um, it was, it was a, a wonderful space to create in. Oh, I just wanted to also acknowledge uh, the team members that worked on this project with me, uh, some of whom are here. Um, at, from LGA at that time, which was uh, late 2004, early 2005, um, it was Michael Lanner, um, who was a key designer on the project, and uh, Jarrett Bohr, Grady Gillies, and Laura Sin. Uh, the contractors that we dealt with are actually design build architects, and Ross Holzer of uh, Holt Pake Holzer uh, uh, Design Build uh, was the uh, key component there. And most importantly are uh, the clients, um, uh, Stephen and Tom, and they're here too tonight. Um, they, are, they were great clients, and it was wonderful to uh, experience a project with people that have a creative, uh, creative force within them. They're both in the theater industry, and uh, they, Stephen's a lighting designer in theater, and uh, Tom is a, a uh, costume designer in theater. And so they appreciated the creative process, and they could also communicate in a, in a graphic way, which is always very helpful. They also gave very strict, uh, not strict, let's say very descriptive criteria, uh, design criteria to us. And um, this is actually, the text part of this is the actual list of um, design criteria that they gave us. So some of the things that were pretty general was the space needed to be flexible for different types of um, parties or gatherings. Uh, they had to um, keep light in but give some shade, uh, keep the noise of these industrial fans out, um, and also allow the views uh, to, to stay. One of the, um, well, the most unique uh, challenge that we had to deal with uh, were their cats. And um, they have two cats, and they very much wanted the cats to be able to meander around the space, and they didn't want to have to deal with um, checking the door every time they left. And so we literally, well, at first we were concentrating on finding a cat-proof uh, net and cat enclosures, all these very strange things on the web that we were looking at. Um, but then when we went towards the idea of tank, um, and we know that there were going to be these wooden slats, we actually had to um, compress the head of the uh, cat and, and measure it to see how, if the cat could get through, get through the space. And, and so far, we've been, we've been fine. Um, we presented to our uh, clients three schemes, uh, which we usually do early in the design process. I'll go through the first two quickly. Uh, they were called pool and sail, and then um, the last being tank. Pool um, was comprised of these three partitions that um, kind of enclosed the space. And, uh, and then there would, be, there would be two or three pools um, within the enclosed space, shallow water with basically underlit to uh, give a shimmering effect to, the, um, to these partitions. The partitions would be uh, available for the clients to display um, their personal items. Um, the reaction to this design was that the pools seemed too expensive, too much maintenance, and um, and also the, the partitions were either, either you were very much behind a wall or very much exposed. So they wanted more of a meshing 
and a gradual feel to, to the porosity of the space. The next uh, scheme was called SAIL, and this was really trying to, to work with them um, and let their creative juices flow every time they were up there, because the only um, permanent structure on, the, uh, on this project were these masts that were, there were a field of masts throughout the roof, and uh, what we were trying to do was encourage Stephen and Tom to um, have uh, sails that they would hook up in different ways and lighting that would go up in different ways uh, for different events uh, such as you know an intimate lunch versus a, a cocktail party and their response to this was you know we really just want to relax and <laughs> we don't want to work so hard for our uh, for our for our leisure so then we come to tank and obviously it's inspired by the water tanks uh, throughout the city um, they, they, they dot our skyline, uh, especially down in, in a neighborhood like Chelsea. The storyboard for the, uh, for the project tank is basically as if the two tanks that are kind of hovering above this, this roof particularly fell and unraveled partially. And um, they would therefore form this partial enclosure. We were also very interested in the um, in the system of the ties on the, on the tank and how they get closer towards the bottom because of the force of gravity and therefore you know the spacing was very functional it was very functional and we kind of took that notion to uh, space out the uh, the slats of the boards uh, in a functional manner so the spacing would um, talk to very various amounts of privacy or uh, sound attenuation, or uh, light filtering in. These are some pictures of the finished product. Um, here you can see the relationship of the space to the uh, water tanks kind of hovering above. This is looking down from, from the north, and um, you can see the, the very simple structural system, which was uh, steel tubes kind of used as posts cantilevered, cantilevered over. Uh, on the upper left-hand corner here, you see the, the actual fans, the industrial fans that we were trying to keep the noise out. And um, we, we took it to a certain extent. We were going to have these uh, L-shaped kind of louvers even block even more sound across that trellis. But once the trellis went up, uh, we didn't want to block any more light. The wood we selected, using, uh, selected to use was uh, Ipe. Uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It's a great wood um, that uh, can be used outdoors without um, doing any pressure treating or adding chemicals and off-gassing. Um, it's sustainably harvested and um, it's, it's naturally durable and, um, and fire resistant. So any kind of barbecue accidents would uh, have no effect whatsoever. I'm just going to go through a few issues quickly to show how the design uh, changed throughout time. Uh, this was a um, perspective uh, that uh, Michael did uh, during design development of the project. And early on, we were really trying to have all the wood slats be all-encompassing and cover, cover all the surface, surfaces. Um, we were actually sp speaking to a number of uh, tank uh, water tank uh, maintenance people and, and uh, trying to actually use those slats, but those slats, we were told, those, the boards from old water tanks would be, have too much water rot in them for use. Um, if you refer to this slide in kind of a clockwise, in clockwise manner from the upper left, uh, the upper left kind of shows the idea during design development of this curved, these curved planks. Uh, when we, we were trying to do that with a uh, curved, uh, kind of custom curved piece of uh, steel for the structure, and when we were working with our structural engineer, um, uh, Andy Renfro of Blue Sky Design, uh, it, was, it was deemed kind of uh, unfeasible for, um, for its purpose, too much, too much design for its purpose, too much cost. And so we went with the steel tubes just kind of meeting at an angle and then a full pen penetration weld there for, to carry this somewhat long cantilever. 
we wanted to get the curve back and therefore did it simply by um, adding this, this um, bracket. Some other um, features that kind of changed throughout, throughout uh, the process of the job were the bench and the deck material. Again, that same image on the upper left-hand corner uh, shows the, the floor of the, the deck being in the wood slats. Um, then the image on the lower left-hand corner uh, was given to us by uh, the clients from their book collection, um, and it was an image of a Japanese garden, and they, they very much liked the, the linear feel of the different materials there. We transformed that into, or translated that into um, the middle slide, which is uh, from the construction documents of just pavers and uh, wood slats in kind of an alternating random pattern. During the bidding process, this was uh, value engineered out of the, the project, but I think what we came to have was a little bit more sophisticated in, the, in pattern because it really uses the, the light and the shadows of the trellis itself to create the pattern of the pavers. This uh, simply just shows the plan, which is um, all of 800 square feet, lots of, lots of stuff packed into those 800 feet. I just wanted to deal a little bit with the, the stair bulkhead. We knew right from the beginning that it should kind of be um, a dumb box, uh, for lack of a better word. It really shouldn't compete at all with the trellises. It serves its purpose, it lets light down, it vents out, um, the hot air of the, of the um, dwelling, and it encloses the stair. The stair itself, while uh, it was beautifully designed, it was uh, slightly over-designed uh, for, for our, our budget. It was a definite less, lesson learned here um, as far as uh, we had a, a wonderful, realistic budget, um, and it was uh, certainly a, a great investment, but it, it wasn't extensive to have such a, a custom designed stair. So the actual stair that we built is a, a very elegant uh, steel tube stair, custom but, but uh, very simply designed. Um, on the lower left hand uh, corner, I mean I'm sorry, lower right hand corner, you can see um, our exercise in trying to incorporate uh, Stephen and Tom's um, sea glass collection. Uh, we were trying in, in some way to bring light through the sea glass into the space and uh, we put the we cast the sea glass into resin and we were trying to use it as as treads um, for for the uh, for the stairs and now I have a really great paperweight on my <laughs> on my desk the uh, stair bulkhead also acts as um, a, a beacon at night uh, a wonderful light force that cast shadows in different ways on, on the project. We had some complications with the building department um, when we were trying to get the permit for this job. We were actually uh, rejected at first because the building department has an interesting interpretation of enclosed space. So the building was overbuilt, um, uh, being an older uh, manufacturing building, and we couldn't add any additional square footage. Now they were deeming this space to be enclosed space, and we had to prove to them with some back and forth, back and forth of uh, the amount of porosity of each space um, and, and the trellises and how much light would come in. So we, we did prove our point, but it was quite a struggle. And you can see here the, the varying levels of density. And of course, there's always some kind of structural issue. So we had um, these wonderful cantilevered posts um, that we that were designed to anchor into the concrete slab uh, of, of the roof. And we didn't do any initial probes because we couldn't kind of jeopardize the, the or risk the water, um, water pen penetrating into the, into the dwelling below during the early de design stages. But when uh, the contractors opened up to see the slab, it was, there was actually very little, if no, um, kind of tensile force ten or, or um, reinforcing rods to kind of counteract the, the cantilever. So what we did is we added um, two angles down in the bedroom below, which kind of infringed on one of the client's design criteria of very little disruption to the space that they actually live and work out of. Um, and here they are uh, there in the bedroom. Um, we were trying to uh, 
get them to celebrate them in some way, painting them red or um, having lights incorporated, but that, that didn't happen. Here's some construction photographs and the finished product again. This night view um, actually shows the, the lights that uh, Stephen um, selected, which were these bagel lights. And we were all very happy to see the somewhat coincidental uh, relationship between the Empire State Building and the lights. Uh, this photograph uh, the clients took, and I think it shows wonderfully the, the essence of the project, the, um, the angles, the shadows, and the partially enclosed space. This picture I took on a Sunday um, brunch, being lucky enough to live nearby, I can come visit. And I think this shows um, the es essence of the project also, which is really an ex extension of, of their home. Thank you very much.